Hey guys, it's Justin and Alicia, and today we wanted to share a little bit about our son Isaiah with you. It's October, and that is Spina Bifida Awareness Month, so we just wanted to share a story. So for those of you who don't know us, we also have triplets. So Isaiah is our youngest. Let's rewind back to January of 2017. We found out that we were pregnant, and I'm not gonna lie, we were nervous because our first pregnancy, we had triplets. So we have two boys and a girl and they were two. They weren't even two at that time. I was showing super fast and they always say that you show faster on the second pregnancy. Well, that's especially true when your first pregnancy is triplets because I was showing really quickly and we were, we were excited about a new baby, but we were nervous that it was going to be another high risk pregnancy and another three babies. Another multiples. <laughs> so after the first sonogram, we were really excited because we found out that it was just one baby. That was a huge relief because I was thinking, oh my goodness, we may have six kids between two pregnancies. <laughs> but anyways, we, that was a big relief for us. We found out it was one baby. Uh, we didn't know if it was a boy or girl yet. We had always wanted four kids. So that was, yeah. that was awesome. We had always wanted four kids who were close together in age and you can't get much closer than triplets and then another one less than two years later. And because he was our last baby, we decided not to come up with a list of names like we did for the triplets. And uh, obviously we only had to come up with one name, so we thought it was gonna be a piece of cake just like everything else. And so we just decided to wait until we found out if he was gonna be a boy or a girl. So at 19 weeks, we went in for the anatomy scan, um, the sonogram that would tell us whether we were having a boy or a girl, and we were so excited. And we hadn't, like Justin said, we hadn't come up with any names. I was really wanting a name that started with a C, because with the triplets, we just went down our list of favorite names, and it just happened that two of the names have M's and one has C, but it was, a, you know, Madeline and Miles, so a girl and a boy. I didn't think people would think anything about it, but. People were always asking, why why don't they all have M names? Well, we didn't want to do matchy names, but this was our chance to even things out. <laughs> and in our family, we were going to have two M's and two C's and have it nice and even. <laughs> and so we didn't know what we wanted to name our baby, but we were ready and we were going to look for a C name. So we were at the sonogram and it was taking a really long time. But honestly, I didn't think anything about it because we were We've used to- We've had a lot of sonograms and they've all yeah. taken a long time. When you have three babies at once, you just, you get used to long sonograms. Right. And with it being an anatomy scan, I know it wasn't just a typical sono, so yeah. Didn't really think much about it. And we found out that we were having a boy. And so while we were in the room, we were so excited and Justin started brainstorming names. And I was just sitting there looking at the screen, just watching our child and just so engrossed in that. And he said, oh, I think I know what his name is. And I said, how do you know what is it? He said, I, I think I know what his name's gonna be, but you're not gonna like it. And he wouldn't tell me. He said he would wait and think about it and tell me about it later. So after we left the sonogram, we went straight to our doctor's office, which was on a different floor. And we had to wait a long time there too. And so we were sitting outside in the waiting room and Justin still wouldn't tell me this name. How do you have a name and you don't tell me what the name is? So we were just looking at the pictures and just really excited. And then we finally got called back. And when we went through the door, I heard some nurses talking and I heard our name and I heard something about spine. And then they got really quiet when they saw us. So at that point I got a little nervous and Justin was trying to reassure me and say, you know, it's fine. I've got scoliosis, which is not related, but he kept saying, you know, they were probably talking about your back and you have to do, you know, something different with, with the pregnancy. I'm sure it was you they were talking about. He just tried to reassure me that everything was okay. So we got in the room, the doctor actually did come in and tell us that we had some complications with the pregnancy, that our, our boy had spina bifida, and that she didn't know a lot about it, but there were actually doctors that were from Dallas that were in our town that day. So she walked us upstairs and introduced us to these doctors that we had actually, we had known because uh, we had seen them a couple of times with the triplets during the whole pregnancy there. And he turned out to be an absolutely amazing doctor for us. Came through big time with insurance companies he was crucial in yeah. fighting for... If it wasn't for him, I don't I don't think we would have made the deadline and been a 
candidate for fetal surgery because he pushed so hard. But we'll go into more on the fetal surgery in part two of this series. The MFM, the maternal fetal medicine doctor, sat us down and he did a more in-depth sonogram and said that our baby did have spina bifida. He explained that spina bifida is a neural tube defect in which the spine doesn't zip closed properly, either at the top or the bottom or some portion in between within the first month of pregnancy. This happens before, most of the time before a woman even knows she's pregnant. There are three different kinds of spina bifida and Isaiah has myelomeningocil or myelomeningocil. He's I've heard a it said, baby. <laughs> I've heard it said both ways. But basically that's the most severe form. But every child is different and every case of spina bifida is different. And you can have two kids with the exact same openings in the exact same place and they will be affected differently. It's often referred to as the snowflake condition because no two cases of spina bifida are ever the same. But what we were told that day was to expect Isaiah to never walk, to expect him to have cognitive delays, to expect him to never move his legs, that he had bilateral club feet, that he had hydrocephalus, which means you have pressure from the fluid in your brain, that he had a Chiari 2 malformation, which means that because of the opening in his spine, his brain had been pulled down into the spinal column. And that's basically what a Chiari 2 malformation is in my, my terms, my non-doctor terms. We were also told that he would need a shunt as soon as he was born because of the pressure in his head that there was no no different option that's what happens you have spina bifida you get a shunt when you're born and we were told all these textbook facts it sounded extremely scary and just the unknown of it all one of the things we were told was there's a fetal surgery that can help lessen the effects of spina bifida but there's no cure for spina bifida then after that he uh, told us something very important. He said, it is not your fault. And I feel like we both really needed to hear that. He said there could be something, some kind of small percentage chance that it was genetics or something, but this is most of the time just completely out of your control. So it's not your fault and you need to be there for one another. And we need to, to focus on moving forward at this point. And after that, he asked us if we wanted to continue with the pregnancy. This caught us both very off guard uh, and we, we said yes we want to continue with the pregnancy. After that we went and looked at the statistics and 66% of babies with spina bifida are aborted and we feel like that's just because of fear, uh, fear of unawareness, people don't know what it is and you get all of this information and you don't think about the child, you think about what he or she has and, and all this stuff do. yeah and what they can't do but you don't think about what they can do you don't think about the life that will be lived and the joy that they're going to have and bring and so even though we had an amazing doctor we were still presented with all these very scary facts just like anyone else was very negative very textbook facts that yeah. like i said spina bifida is a snowflake condition so even if that may be true for one kid, it's not for the other. And so you can't put a blanket, this is what you should expect on anybody. It's not one size fits all. And that's one of the main reasons that we wanted to start our YouTube channel and why Spina Bifida Awareness Month is so important. We need to share the joy that these kids bring to our lives. Whether they're walking or not, they're kids just like everyone else and they have yeah. laughter and love and hope and joy and they bring so much to your family and to our lives. So that day our MFM gave us his cell phone and he put us in contact with Children's Herman Memorial Hospital in Houston and their fetal surgery team, their spina bifida team, were the ones who contacted us and that's where we first got our first glimpse of hope. They said that there's a chance he may walk, that there was a chance that he wouldn't have neuro or bladder or cognitive delays or all these things that we were told, you know, were just a blanket fact. You have spina bifida, you've got these things. We were told that's not necessarily true and that they even had a surgeon at the hospital who has spina bifida. And so that was one of the, the first glimpses of hope that we had that, okay, 
there, there's something beyond just this diagnosis. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. And they told us that there was a chance that we could have fetal surgery, but there are very strict qualifications on whether it would help the child or not. And so we would have to go and do a bunch of tests and find out whether we were candidates for fetal surgery. But like Justin said, we will go into that in part two of this series that we're doing. So after all this, we ended up going out to my truck after we talked to the Houston team and everything and we just kind of break down. We're both just bawling and when we were in there, Alicia just said, she said, didn't you say you knew his name? And I picked up my Bible and I said, yeah, I think I do. And I opened up when we were actually in the sonogram room and I told her that I knew his name. I just felt the Lord tell me this passage of scripture and uh, it was Isaiah chapter 43. And Isaiah 43 talks about going through deep waters and how the Lord's gonna carry you through that. And then it even goes into a part that saying, uh, I'm doing something new. And have you already seen it? Don't you see it right now? I'm creating something new and I've already started it. And uh, I just felt the Lord laying that on my heart. And that's when I, I was thinking, huh, Isaiah. And I didn't think Alicia would like it. And we got out to the car. It wasn't a C name. <laughs> it wasn't a C name. Cut Isaiah. <laughs> that could have been it. But we got out to the car. We were crying. I said, yeah. And we opened it up and read that chapter. And I said, I think, I think this is his name, Isaiah. And we agreed on it. And... Uh, from there, it's been such a long journey that we're gonna share with you guys. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, but here we are. And but so much joy, so much happiness. Oh yeah. It's just been amazing. I can't imagine not having been through all of this and how much stronger and better we are as a family. Absolutely. And Isaiah is just, he's perfect. You know, everybody has things that they do differently and everyone has things they struggle with and his little stubbornness, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but even with that stubbornness comes determination. Don't you nod your head, you know you are worse than me. Um, but that determination is so important for him to continue pushing through all the hard things that he has to work through to yeah. overcome. But uh, everybody has their difficulties, but he, he's just amazing little boy and, and he's doing great right now which is yeah. so fun even if he wasn't doing great he's still he's still so much fun and brings so much joy and has so much joy so it's just an amazing thing that, that has happened to our family so we want to thank you for watching this video and we want to ask you more than normal that you share this video so other people will know that it's Spina Bifida Awareness Month and maybe somebody who is just finding out that, that their baby's been diagnosed with Spina Bifida can reach out to us and we can be an encouragement to them. Because uh, which has happened, happened before and it's it been has. awesome. It has and that was something that we needed so much when we were in those shoes and so we just hope that somebody will come across this and see, you know, be able to look at our channel and see how amazing Isaiah is, whether he's walking or not when he was crawling and struggling, you know, he's taking steps now, but no matter where he is, you can see him as a person, see his face and see the joy and the happiness and the love and how much better our lives are because of him. So like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you want to see more of Isaiah, you can check our channel. He just turned two and we have a birthday video up that it's basically all about him. We will leave a link to that below. And also keep your eye out for part two of this series and we will go into our fetal surgery, which was crazy. It really blew our minds that that was even an option or even a thing. We thought, for sure, that was science fiction, that you can't have surgery while you're pregnant. Yeah, they can't. Like, didn't I just see this on Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> they like took the baby out. <laughs> like holding the baby. Spoiler, <laughs> Which that's is, not, that's how, not it how it happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for TV. But he was but not like, so good for a baby. Little baby, I'm gonna <laughs> fix you. Yeah. <laughs> At least fetal surgery is getting the name out there. There's awareness being brought, whether it's, you know, close or close-ish or not. <laughs> but anyways, we will see y'all next time and we will talk to you later. Bye.